Good leadership is understanding the place of ignorance a lot of your decisions came from before you realized you wanted to change. This is the the homie for real. I'm so glad to have him on the pod. Today, our guest is one of the the best conversationalists I know as far as when it comes to men and saying what needs to be said and make it sound so smooth. But anyway, I had the opportunity <laughs> to be a guest on this podcast, change the subject, man. It was, man, yeah, that episode was crazy. It's one of my favorite episodes by far. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to BJ. What's going on, bro? Everything is great, brother. How you been? Man, trying to hold it down out here in these YouTube streets or podcasting streets or whatever, you know, but it's all good. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I definitely see you um, a lot more. And I know that that comes from hard work. Like, you're everywhere. So I want to commend you on the work because you're one of 10 people. If I use my hand, you know, hands, rather, that are speaking positively about the issues that we deal with in terms of relationships and whatnot. So, I mean, keep going. That's all I can tell you because I know it ain't easy. <laughs> it ain't easy, bro. Got kids, wife, and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and shout out for to sure. the wife real quick for allowing me this space to rock out because she's watching the kids and we got to make it work. It's that teamwork, man. Got to make that work. But anyway. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I want to talk to you today about leadership qualities and uh, you know, what does that look like? What kind of qualities that looks like in a man today by today's culture? Because a lot has changed. You hear a lot of people in these in these social media streets talking about what a man should be and all this other stuff. It's one thing to type it on the keyboard. It's another thing to actually live it. You know yeah, for sure. So I want to talk about some of those things. What are the qualities, some qualities that a man should possess in today's culture? Um let me ask you this, from your experience and what you see, because I know you talk to a lot of people, what are what is the state of manhood today? Are we getting better? Are we getting worse? Like, what kind of changes need to be made? From what do you see? What are the state of men today? I hope that you're the one And that you are the prototype honest i think that is not going to be what it should until it becomes within the realm of power of men like i think that manhood is still being determined by women mm. so um like even when you when you have those conversations well at least the ones that we see in public yes. it's always based on a standard that is set according to or driven by the needs of women. It's never about what it is for him to sustain his character, his morals, his integrity, um, how much of what is being told to him in terms of leadership and responsibility are things that he actually likes to do. It's not a it's not driven by the activity and the assessment of men setting standards for other men. It's still according to how we're going to live and step up and provide and make provisions for women. So I don't think that it's ever going to change until we not care about what people think and we actually assess ourselves and do the work on ourselves. Like I don't, I don't see it ever changing because as long as a woman tells you you're not sufficient or acceptable, you're going to still operate from that mind state. Mm -hmm. So much to unpack there. I love it. Yeah. This is why I have BJ on yeah. the show. So I know <laughs> in the comment section, y'all going to go wild, but it's all good. I'll I'll take that smoke. It's all good. This is why I have him on the yeah, show. Yeah, for sure. Gonna keep it 100. For sure. And, and I agree because a lot of times when we, I know for me, BJ, when I was growing up, I, you know, I grew up in that 90s era, right? So mm -hmm. I'm looking at the perspective of guys in the hood, you need to get this, you need to get that, you need in order to get the woman that you want. Not because 
as a man, I should do what I need to do just as a man. You're right, right. It's it's solely then, based on uh, what women want. Yeah, and I think a lot of that too is still driven by women. Like when you think about it, because imagine being the guy who did all of what he was handed down from a guy who was actually chasing a woman, not chasing the standard. You know what I'm saying? And then you get all of what they told you you needed in your toolkit. And then you approach that woman that you felt like you were prepared for. And she still tells you you're not good enough. Hmm. So now you send that broken man right back into the world, not trusting nobody. You can't trust who you look up to and you can't trust the process. It really does take to become the guy that you ultimately want to be, but don't know you should be. Mm -hmm. It sucks, you know? Yeah. So I really suggest that like, in order for you to get the process started, you got to spend enough time with yourself to find out, okay, what, what am I? Well, no, let me rephrase that. How tired are you of what you're tired of? You know what I'm saying? Like when you sit with that and begin to unpack that part, then you'll start to, you know, set yourself on that journey for real. Mm hmm. So who mm -hmm. so who is the standard? Because for for men, I know I had growing up in the hood, I had the dope boys and the and the the thugs and the crips and the blood. I had all that in the hood. But then as I got older, I had the pastor and the other men of of, of standard and of quality. And that's when I started to kind of make this shift, you know, mm -hmm. from hood stuff to more of like integrity and character and morals and values so who helped you become the man that you are today me <laughs> like <laughs> i know that sounded arrogant but <laughs> um to kind of give you like a backstory i'm yes. a i'm a guy that is raised by 99 percent women right um, my immediate family was only five men, uh, two of which have passed and gone on. Um, my uncle and my great grandfather and my great grandfather, even though he was in my life for such a short time, he's the most impactful man to this day that I would say my manhood kind of thrives from, you know, um, there's a very sentimental value between him and I because we shared the same birthday. So our relationship was like extremely tight. And I remember how insistent he was about like knowing who you are, knowing, you know, your last name is Jackson, but you got my blood, which he his last name was Mac Mullen. Like he wanted me to represent what he represented. So it was like, those moments, like he was the first person to take me out back in the alley and put the target up and gave me a BB gun and we would practice shooting like he like that type of thing. But again, that was a very short time in my life. And then the rest of that time, I was pretty much in the care of women who ultimately raised me to be the void filler because he was that for them. And now he's gone. So now little Bran is the void filler, right? And I grow up always being like made responsible for something. I got a little cousin up under me two years that she's passed away. And um, when we were kids, it was like, Bran, hold her hand across the street, you know? And like all of these things that like kind of molded me into this person, and then once I finally got of age and realized the responsibilities, not so much the core, but then all of the stuff added on to it, I got tired of the shit. Mm -hmm. So you get that you get to that point where you get tired of what you're tired of, but you have to know what direction to steer yourself. Cause I tried to be, you know, fuck hoes, get money. It didn't work because I care too much about women to do that. So I had to figure out like, no, it means speak up and say what you're truly feeling. And 
it got to a point where I got tired of what I was tired of altogether. And when you have a prayer and meditation life, you begin to ask for things, you know, and, you know, speak those things out. And the very first thing that came to me in wanting to be a better leader was a book called The Four Agreements by uh, Don Miguel Ruiz. And it talks about being a man of your word and the importance of what you speak and not taking things personally. And I had to like use that particular part of the book to forgive the women who made me this guy that I was tired of because it's not their fault. They still have to make sure that one, I understand manhood from a gentleman's perspective, but then also doing your part in your community and your village. So like I had to use that to kind of cultivate a starting point. And from there, I just began to be a little bit more clear about what it was I wanted to be and just so happened to become a more impactful person first, then transition into leadership. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so do you think women, because I was listening to your interview with Crystal, shout out to Crystal, mm -hmm. had her on the show. Shout out to Crystal. It. Yeah, right. And when I was listening to you, I was like, <laughs> Man, I gotta get this is why I gotta get BJ back on the show. So uh, y'all make mm -hmm. sure y'all check that episode out. Um what's about to ask you? So do you feel that women care what we go through as men? Oh, that's difficult because the the answer, the answer in general is no, mm -hmm. but then the backstory to the answer is I don't really think they should have to when it comes to certain things. Now, leadership, of course, doesn't depend on nobody but you. So what they think and feel in that space really doesn't matter. Not to say that their feelings don't matter, but their feelings about you in the space of you being effective to not only those that care for you and that you're responsible for, but also yourself what they say to you in that space shouldn't matter because you have to affirm yourself in that position. So it kind of goes hand in hand. I don't want women to think that we're not supposed to care about what they feel, but as a leader, you should know that I already took that into consideration before I made the decision. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. so that's the, that's the trick of it. But to sum it up, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I feel that because there's sometimes when, well, with leadership, you have to really be considerate of those who you've been entrusted with. Yeah, you right, know, right. you have to. And I, I think that's why it's important. That's a, This is a whole different topic, but this is why it's important on depending on the woman you choose, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because as a man, if you know who you are, if you're not struggling with identity and I'm not talking about that kind of identity, I'm talking about as far as being a man and being secure in who you are 99.8 percent of the time she will fall in line if you know who you yeah, are right right and you walk in that confidence but I, right but again they still take control of the landscape so like when you think about men in terms of dating mm -hmm. dating is well this is my personal belief i'm not trying to influence anybody to do anything that they don't want to do, but I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. Dating is the time space that you use to effectively show your person who I truly am, right? Mm -hmm. But if she's telling you that we've been dating for six months, something should have changed, you not being effective by letting her believe that this is the way that we're supposed to operate as two working partners in a situation, right? So here you are trying to show her that you have the skill set, you have the provision and protection under your experience, you have um, a foresight as to what you would like to see in your relationship going forward. And then she puts this pause in it to tell you that her expectation is the standard mm. it's difficult not saying it's wrong because i don't get into 
the wrong and right of things, but it's difficult for you to establish who you are to this relationship when she can put a halt to what you feel like you're showing and displaying in your leadership. Mm. So it, again, I know everybody not going to rock with me on that, but to even personalize it, like I come from a very argumentative background because again, I'm raised as a void filler. I'm raised as a savior. I'm raised like the simp to what we call the simp today. Mm -hmm. That was me growing up. So, I mean, it is what it is. So one of the biggest things that I got tired of was arguing with women. I, I get tired of you screaming and yelling and all of this stuff. So finally, I begin to become of age. I get my own places. I can set the tone. And I noticed that women would get more mad at me for not giving them the energy they're giving me. I'm not going to argue with you. I don't care how loud you're screaming or whatever the case is. So they would get more mad when I'm stepping into the leader I'm trying to become. Mm -hmm. And finally, I had to let this particular person know at this time, if I got to yell at you, you don't belong here. Like, did you assess the space that you were stepping in before you realized you were angry or do you realize that I don't even play music that loud, let alone let somebody talk to me that loud? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like sometimes, sometimes it 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 really your your transition won't make sense to a lot of people because they're so used to what's going on in the world. But when I step out of the world, that means that everything about the world didn't come with me. And it it sucks for people because you out there by yourself with that. Like, mm -hmm. just because you decide all of a sudden that you want to be a leader don't mean that nobody going to follow. <laughs> that's right. But do, right. But do you stand on what you stand on? Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's the reason why, like, I would suggest if any man is struggling with leadership in his relationship or in his life, period, read the four agreements. Like, mm -hmm. that to me is a perfect start. And it won't make you look at the people you trying to lead. It'll make you look at yourself first. Mm -hmm. And and that's where and that's where change starts, right? Change start with me. Right. Change right, doesn't right. start with other people. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's an older book, and I'm listening to it on audiobooks now by Dale Carnegie. Uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Have you read that? Mm. I wanted to, but I don't. I don't have the time to read like something like that. <laughs> right now i yeah. don't i'm gonna be honest because um those are study pieces you know like if you really want to intentionally change something or to affect you know a positive change in your life like that you can't be on the go with something like that mm -hmm. you gotta really sit down and take it in so like i i haven't read a book in so long and it feels like terrible to be honest because if you seen my bookshelf you would thought I read everything on that shelf, but really I bought it to get into it and never got there. But yeah. I definitely would love to read that book because um, if you know me, you know, I don't really have a lot of friends either. So that mm -hmm. was one of the focus points, you know, I wanted to like give my attention to at a particular point in time, but I don't even have time to do that now. So it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to get into for, for real. Yeah. No, I hear you, man. I, I, I get it. Busy life, man. Like I said, I got little kids and, yeah. and a wife. And so a lot of times I try to listen to, you know, stuff. A lot of times when I'm at work or I'm on the road, that kind of thing. And like you said, it's a study mm -hmm. piece for real. But that's a that's a different topic. But I do think being I think one trait of a true leader is is reading is being uh, teachable. Right. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are caught in their own ways. They've been indoctrinated by whoever, good or bad, but very few people mm -hmm. are willing to look outside of themselves and actually listen to what somebody else have to say. We are so just caught up on the way we see things and that's it. And that's how arguments begin. Right, right. You know? And so, I have a I have an interesting perspective to that, too, is mm -hmm. because like people think like reading is like literal, like it always has to come from a book but like you need to like read into 
the places that you're going, the things that you're taking in, like you have to really sit with every piece of yourself to find what the problem is as to why you don't communicate leadership to the people you're trying to lead. Because like those, those of us who, a lot of us have issues with leadership because the people we have to lead are the people that have been controlling us our whole life, right? And that's, that's the part you're not reading. That's the part that you're not reading. You reading all of the the skills and you learning and you're processing everything, but the person this shit has to work on is the person that has been controlling you your whole life. <laughs> it do not get easy, man. I'm trying to tell you. Is not, but you got to stand up to that. You have to, sometimes you got to withdraw yourself too. Like I'm the guy and every woman in my life knows me like them chakras and queen poison and all of them will tell you, I will communicate. I am sick of female energy. Mm -hmm. Like they will tell you, like BJ will say that. And they'd be like, Hey bro, I give you a couple of days, just peek your head in when you ready, you know, because they know like he deal with women all day, every day. Mm -hmm. So yeah. imagine, imagine that conversation for me when it came to my mother, my aunties, I am sick of feminine energy. I am sick of feminine responsibility right now in this moment. I just want to do me. And what that, what that means could be, disrespectful to you for what you feel like your need is but in order for me to continue to be who I am to you you got to get the fuck off my back like you know and those are very hard conversations those are very hard conversations like sometimes you have to like watch them struggle with what you're used to doing for them because the process of them learning is a very emotional thing for you to watch from the sideline, but they won't learn until they grow through and go through mm -hmm. those processes. So like mm -hmm. you, you feel a lot in that space, but it's necessary in order for you to be effective in what you're trying to communicate, you know, mm -hmm. but it's a lot. It's a lot. So how do, cause as I'm listening to you, so how do you get to a place where, you weren't the leader, you in this relationship, you weren't mm -hmm. the leader, you weren't the, and I'm just throwing on my air quotes, head of the home. Mm -hmm. How do you make that transition to becoming that? Uh, it's no, um, it's no like answer that I can give you in terms of what I did, but I can tell you the trajectory of it. Um, I lived with one girlfriend prior to the girlfriend that I'm with now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to be all the way honest. Like, you know, I really take what you talk about serious because I am a man that's trying to get married. I am a man who had to redefine why marriage is important because I see a lot wrong with marriages today. But, um, the responsibilities that I carry and the responsibility of what I believe my manhood should be is one of the biggest reasons why it's so hard for me to financially pay for a ring. I've taken on way too much. And a part of my leadership is to responsibly delegate to people so that my responsibility can be like standard, not so much lesser because I don't want you doing more than me, but I want to be able to comfortably live while being this person, right? So to go back to this one person that I was with before, I lived with this one person and I paid everything, right? And so in being influenced by what I thought were men, you always heard men say, a man's supposed to pay the bills. She don't pay nothing and this and that. And really, when you say this to other men, 
you're basically telling me I'm still trying to impress her by not letting her lift a finger, right? You're basically trying to communicate that she doesn't have to do anything because my intention is to still impress her and to still make her feel as though she's completely taken care of. But what about when you need help? And you conditioned her to not lift a finger. So when you need help, do you think she's going to be inclined to get up and say, hey, babe, do you need anything? You never conditioned her to do anything to know when you need help. Right? So mm -hmm. first place, I end up losing because she was making money while she was there. But mentally, she wasn't involved in the process. So now I'm here and I go from an apartment, I go from my, you know, apartment moving up gradually, more bedrooms. And finally now I'm in a house and you, you pretty much know like homes, different type of money, everything is on you. You got to figure out every inch detail, as I split. So I had to sit down and plan financially how I'm going to be able to handle. And these are conversations that you learn over time to have. And still, to this present day, I struggle with trying to find that balance of responsibility and finance because you want to make decisions for women to better your relationship. But sometimes you just don't have it. Like, if you really want to know why a man is taking so long to propose, in most cases, it's because the nigga really can't afford it. And he can't tell you that. Like, I can't just come and say, babe, hey, I'm short 1500 What you got on it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, these are like real conversations. And I I don't feel ashamed for taking long with my process because I'm still being integral about it. And that is the thing about leadership sometimes. Sometimes you just hanging out there, just trying to make this thing work. But with good intention and making sure that your heart is in the right place, you can speak up for yourself in those moments and say, hey, you don't understand what it is. And respectfully, I can't explain everything to you, but it's a challenge. Or whatever your wording and your verbiage is, when you begin to step into that space, you'll be able to communicate better. Mm -hmm. But it's no process. Sometimes the process of you speaking out is actually going through the circumstance to, to maybe mimic your feelings because again, some like some of the stuff that I speak now, I didn't learn until I was in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was being confronted by it, why are you taking so long? I mean, we've been together, this, that, and the third. And the thing about that is, and I would ask this question, like, well, if you know when I'm coming with the ring, where's the surprise? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if I if I tell you that, okay, my last payment on your ring is on October 7th, then you damn near know, at least by the 9th, now you back to doing what you're doing. October 9th is the latest. He got to ask me because he get the ring on the set. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can't, like, you can't let these things control your integrity like that. So you have to just fight it and talk, you know? So let me ask you this, because as I mm -hmm. listen to you, do you feel that, and you don't have to generalize for all men, but do you think that a man should provide for his girlfriend like he's paying all the bills before marriage? Do you think that he should do all of that before marriage? Or do you think that's something that it, it, it requires a conversation? Because most women... Not, and, I, and I'll let you get back to what you're saying. Most women, I think, they want to carry that workload with you. Most women, not all, because there are some. Yeah, it's it's very few that mm -hmm. want to carry. Um, because you said that, I'll say this: all women don't want what. No, that's not fair. All women are not intentional about being helpmates. All mm -hmm. women are very intentional about getting married, right? So this 
this ba- this imbalance makes it hard for the average guy to make a choice because my question to the woman who is very intentional about getting married but not intentional about being the helpmate is if the relationship is contingent upon me having all my shit together, how am I going to see your benefit? When you think about that, like if you're telling me that you want to be my wife, but you're not showing me how you can help me in times of need and the relationship at the starting point was contingent upon me having all my shit together, how do I see your ability? How do I see the advancement to my life by choosing? So like these are conversations that we have to have. If you're telling me that, you know, I got to take you out two and three times a month and pay all my responsibilities, be in the position to afford to help you if you need car issues fixed and all of these things, taking care of things outside of my own household, explain to me why you would be the person I do this for. What are the benefits of having you in my life for what I need if I'm going to do these things for you? And we not even in a position to do that because we don't know to do that. And mm. and they still kind of, and they still kind of like look at you as if, well, look, you step into me, you come correct. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm not, I'm not mad at. If you get away with it, cool. Like I'm, I'm not fighting those women no more. I'm not trying to make those women see my perspective. I just look past you. God bless you. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's, it's not a very easy thing for men because most of the women that men actually want don't want them back. Mm. It's going to take you a while to learn that too, Mm. you know, but you know, I'm cool with being an admirer, you know, I don't know. (laughs) So, (laughs) so, so, so what do you say to men who maybe they're, they want to be the leader of, well, see, and the only reason why I brought this, this conversation to you is because I think a lot of times we use biblical principles without because when we talk about head a household and all those other things that's that's like more of a a, a a spiritual biblical kind of perspective because by today's standards bj who where's the north star like who has the like where do you get your values and morals and like where does it come from if it isn't biblical where does it come from and how do you design your own kind of leadership? Like your leadership is based on what you feel. Mm-hmm. It isn't based on something that we agree upon. I think in shout out to say a lot of people say like in the Muslim community, right? If they both understand the Quran, then it's easier for them to flow because they get it. But I think a lot of times we use biblical principles with our own little spin to it and i think that's what throws relationships through a loop when we're talking about um head of household and and you know the spiritual leader of the home and all those other things i think we just kind of i think that's where most relationships go wrong we use biblical principles but we want it to be our own spin to it and a lot of people the miscommunication gets funky because it's like i thought i was leading And she's like, no, but I have a different view of leadership. So I'm saying all that to say, where's the North Star in all this? Like, who is to say what is right and what is wrong? Like, where does that come from? Okay, so my personal answer to this Mm -hmm. is the head of the household is the person who has the house in mind most. Okay, so we don't we don't see eye to eye on the head of household mainly because when the guy says it it's more ego based it's it's the way that it's been presented to you through your upbringing you you are used to seeing men in the position of running things and now in the the scope of modern day the man is the least person in the home every day. I know I am. 
I leave out at 5.30 a.m. and don't sometimes get home until 9, 10 o'clock at night. I ain't been home for more than 14 hours. Why would I be the head of the house when there's a person in the home being way more effective in the home than me? Like, if you see my home now, my home is pretty much a home because of my partner, because of the work and the time and the effort. She in the yard, she planting flowers. We, I ain't never had no backyard lawn furniture and all of the, you know, the things that this person is providing me for being the earner and the provider. So like, I don't, I don't get why it's so important to have that argument if you know that you're the person least in the home. The person that has the home in mind most to me is the leader. So like I don't have a problem in stepping aside to hear the person who deals with the home most to hear what they're dealing with in terms of the house and then being the person that steps up and say, well, hey, this is how we'll help or this is how we'll fix because she still respects me as the man of the house. Leader and man aren't the same. Head and man are not the same. You know what I'm saying? So you you have to like break these things down for yourself and really have some real conversations. I don't believe in the biblical aspect of running a household if you two are not biblical people in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not saying the Lord said in Thessalonians that men are supposed to, don't come with me with your spiritual, you know, your spiritual miracle stuff. Like, no, if we going to be in a relationship and we're using traditional and modern practices, then this is how we communicate, you know? But like, if, and then too, it's a lot of men that want to be technical about the spiritual way that God said thing but you ain't even prayed with your partner before. You know what I'm saying? Like that type of stuff, like leading by example, that's where that come in. If we ain't never like grab hands and pray together, how am I listening to you tell me what you and your God talking about? And you talking about what God told you. You like, you don't even pray. <laughs> yeah, you don't even pray. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't say grace over your food. I ain't never seen you kneel your head down. I ain't never heard you say amen, two man, three man nothing you know what i'm saying so like that type of stuff is like y'all gotta really figure that out for yourselves and i'm not that i'm not that guy at all like i'm not about to you know bible belt nobody but mm -hmm. i'll definitely say okay this is what i've been feeling this is what i've been thinking mm -hmm. i don't have a problem with communicating in confrontational moments because that's what makes a great leader, you know, not being affected by the landscape or the turmoil that comes from what you want to say. You know, like you have to build up to the point where a person can see like, OK, he's really changing or he's really trying to do what's best for our family or our unit. You mm -hmm. have to do those things. And um, leaders show grace, too. That's right. You I, know. I, preach. You know, God. it's. Ah. It's okay. Not, it's not like a tyrannical thing. You got to show grace because nobody wants to be talked to like a peasant or, you know, a peon, you know, so it's, it's a lot that goes into this, but like, I'm just speaking from my experiences, not by no means trying to teach or influence nobody to take on what I'm saying, but just to get you on the path to your own like direction in leadership. This is what I did. You know? mm -hmm. And I agree. I'm glad you brought up the whole grace thing, because for one, I think a lot of relationships don't even make it that far to extend grace. Like mm -hmm. the first disagreement people have, they're ready to break camp. They're like, I'm done. You get on my yeah, nerves. Yeah, I realize sure. I don't like you. You know, that whole thing. And it's worth having that conversation, because I do believe you got to have grace and space in order to make a relationship work. And, and it's how you talk to people. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. Like you say, trying to be a tyrant, trying to flex and all this other stuff. That, that ain't going to work. You're going to yeah. lose them. Like, how do you You're think? you going to lose them. 
yeah how do you think that you're going to have some kind of influence with somebody when you're talking to them in a demeaning way like they're gonna be like yes yeah, sir mm-hmm. okay like really mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad yeah. you brought brought the grace thing. And then also, too, I also like when you talked about being with the head of the home thing, who is in the home the most? Because I had I had some issues. My wife and I had some issues with communication because she's at home more than I am. She's like, look, I got the kids. I'm working. I got to do all this stuff. I'm at home doing this stuff with the kids. You're gone because it's like you. I work 12, 13 hours a day. I'm rarely there. I'm up at 2.45 in the morning. I don't get home till 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So a lot of times I'm just kind of stepping into what she's already got in motion. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And that ain't enough. That's not enough. It, 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 that's not enough. So I still got to come <laughs> home. <laughs> Bro, yeah. So I still got to come home, help give baths, help clean up, wash dishes, help fold clothes, take out the trash all these different things, but I realized that when we were butting heads was because I tried to come into the house with my own agenda. She's like, look, if you just listen to me and see how I run the house, if you just fall in line with me, we can have more time at night later on. Mm. (laughs) If you just listen to the way I already got things set in motion, and me and my thick-headed self didn't get it for a long time. But now that I got it, and I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm glad that you brought up who is yeah, being sure. home the most. So like you say, I think a lot of it is man ego stuff. I'm the head of my home. You ain't never home. You're not home, right? You know, um, that answers that question of, and I know you've heard this before, where they'll say like, you know, mom will get, you know, Pandora perfume and all of this stuff, and dad will get socks, right? I used to take on that spirit of believing that, okay, well, you know, we, we value women more than men. And, you know, we take on these narratives by the example, but we have to also give credit where credit is due. The most impact in terms of household structure, nine times out of 10 comes from women, right? No argument there, you know, because of the conditions that men have allowed to be set for them that they got to go out and get the bacon and all of these different things, which is true, but you need to still allot some time for you to be effective in your home. This is what a leader does. Okay, my impact is not the same in my house. How am I going to set it up to where they're going to still know that daddy and what he thinks and feels matters? You can't do that from the phone you got to be there you know what i'm saying like and this is stuff that men don't want to accept to be honest like i had to accept it like okay if you ain't never home why don't you think she gonna do whatever she want she ain't got nobody to really answer to because you gone you know and especially with kids you know when the baby crying and y'all both in the bed who you who you think gonna get up You know what I'm saying? Like, be honest with yourself. And like, so when you really break those things down, you realize like you being an asshole. You being egotistical, like you have nothing to show or speak for in this situation. So like the head of the household is ultimately the person who has the house in mind most, you know, and my brother, that ain't you. You know what I'm saying? Like you just, you just have to accept that and not, you know, it was a hard lesson. It was a hard pill to swallow because it's days where I feel like I love and care for a lot of people that don't show it back. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that household, that household conversation should not be the leverage in that conversation where I feel a certain way because the circumstance in that situation don't change. The only way I can complain about that is if I step up and be more present. So now that I'm feeling like I'm not being heard or effective or nobody cares about what I feel, don't use all these different excuses for why you not present as the reason why you want to snap off on everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what think, me doing. Right. And when you think about it, and I'm just using this as an example, back, you know, a long time ago, 
their the fathers when they were hunters they would take their kids with them so their job mm. they were with their kids yeah you know for sure yeah so they for can sure. teach them life lessons and memorable things because they like hey this is how you shoot this this is how you cut mm -hmm. the head off of, you know and they would teach their boys things so the father right, had that right. much more impact you know what i'm saying and that's, remember, that's not common it's it's not right and and this i remember mm -hmm. my wife told me one time we fell out and she was like you know you want me to be more feminine you want me to operate more on my femininity she was like but it's good that you bring home a check but i need help i need help around the house because we don't we don't talk about that enough and i'm glad mm -hmm. you brought that up you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, well, I bring home my check. Yeah, but she got to work just like you. But her job is even, it's more stressful because she got to take care of the kids too. Right, right, right. And we don't talk about that enough and grocery shopping and all those other things. So I guess with, with male leadership, so how can a man fit into that then as far as a leader? what What is it that he can do if the woman is struggling with that? how can he be more effective in that process if he want more of a feminine woman? The way, because I don't, ooh, I don't think the circumstances for that particular issue ever changes. I just think that the most important thing for you to do is get in, get in it with her. Like, that's the only thing you can do. Like, get involved with what she's dealing with with her you know hey y'all uh, bring y'all ass in here we finna watch something on tv so you know and then you slide in on her like babe i know you was trying to you know get your hair together go ahead and do your thing i'm about to you know hold them down in the living room and watch this three-hour movie i'm probably gonna be asleep at the last hour and a half but at least i can get them you know focused in on this movie to where you can get your whole head together or you know, like I'm about to take them. If you got boys, you know, take them to get their haircuts, like all of these different things. And then you slide on her and say, hey, go on and get your hair and nails or go and get your nails and feet together while I got the boys. Like get involved with her. You know what I'm saying? And that's the only thing I, su I can suggest. Now, if you don't have kids and your partner is dealing with anything, right, is to be real and I'm maybe I'm just speaking from my experience like I feel like people who don't have responsibilities outside of each other mm -hmm. have the hardest time figuring out what to do for each other because you never have to think outside the box for real like the people who have kids always have to be creative because you just have to like constantly think on the fly. Whereas these people that don't have kids, they just do what's convenient until they get bored with it. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why it's such a a weird way to apply certain things when it comes to married people versus single people because, well, hell, single people been doing this the whole time and they done been doing this so long until now they're bored with what's available. Whereas the person that, got the three kids, they all young, I still like to have sex, you still like to have sex, you still like dates, I still like dates. Y'all got to be innovative the entire time. You know what I'm saying? So it gives a lot more like inspiration behind the effort, in my opinion, you know, but it still doesn't give those single people with no children the excuse. You just got to figure out how to be innovative too. But I think that's the the difference but just get involved if i mean if that's the only thing that you can do do that you know yeah because uh some guys I, i'll talk to some guys and they like i'm not domesticated you know i'm i'm not i'm not about to mop a floor or i'm not about to fold yeah. some clothes you know that whole thing so they sitting there looking crazy you know mm -hmm. and he's like i don't do those i don't wash dishes and i'm like you in the whole relationship what you gonna say what you're not gonna do <laughs> yeah, you know, go in that kitchen with the mop and bucket. Hey, babe, I'm doing this right. You know what I'm saying? Like, let her stand there and watch you, whatever. Like, hey, how you do this? Let me let you know. I'm gonna just 
I'm gonna practice right here. You tell me yes or no. Y'all make it a joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, get involved. Yeah. Because, like, like I say, I'm a guy who is gone. You know, I could be working five, six days a week. I just came off of a six day work week, and I don't know how my girl do it. I don't. I ain't about to be like, girl, don't do. You shouldn't. Hey, what are you doing? Nah, 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 nah. I don't care what that girl do. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that my effect in the household is not that strong to make a difference to what I'm telling her not to do. It's not. Because what I'm getting ready to do or implement, it's not going to be consistent because I don't even know what my work week going to look like the next day. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop trying to stop trying to govern what you don't be around for. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get that. You know, and if anything you should be paying more attention to is how to be more present so mm. that you don't have to say much at all. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is crazy. That shit is crazy. But, again, that's just me. I'm not here to make no guy feel bad about his process or nothing because we all got one. I'm just speaking on what worked for me. Um, I'm not the y'all. I'm not that. I don't do the y'all and I'm, you know, always trying to categorize. No, that's mm-hmm. not me. I'm just telling you what I did, you know. For sure. Um, I would like to transition. There's uh three questions I would like to ask you before you leave. But mm-hmm. give me your your top three traits that you feel that most men should have in order for a healthy relationship. Just give me Brandon's three traits that you mm. think every man should have that that kind of constitutes to him being a good leader. Good leadership is understanding the place of ignorance a lot of your decisions came from before you realized you wanted to change. Uh, that's the first thing that comes to mind because you could easily be a person that moves simply because you're tired of standing in the same place for too long and still not know where you're going. Right. That. And the person that stood still and was patient is actually the leader because they get to see how far you got, see where you went in the wrong direction and then watch you come back. That, to me, depending on what that situation is that I'm giving a hypothetical to, that, to me, could be embarrassing. Mm. You went all the way out there, showed yourself, and then had to come back. And this Mm. person was still standing patient and let you figure out the wrong decision. And now you want to come back and say, I'm the head, I'm the leader, I'm the this. No, my guy. Sit back and be patient. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that, like, you got to re- you gotta remember that a lot of who you were and a lot of what you operated in came from a very ignorant place before you realized what needed to change. Um, I think that true leaders have to be tired of what they're tired of. Mm-hmm. A lot of men are not tired of being treated the way that they're treated as men. Like when we get on these spaces and be on social media, you scroll, everybody an influence or not. Everybody. Everybody. You just scrolling down and listening to a bunch of people just polluting the air with all of this mess. But you really have to be tired of what you're tired of. So when you get tired of what you're tired of, you unsubscribe from them people. Ooh, that's a bar. You know what I'm saying? Like you really, it's so many people that I love that I don't talk to no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just be honest. Like the conversation not there, brothers, family, we don't. And and the first thing out of my mouth is when they ask you, why well, I ain't heard from you. We don't speak the same language no more. And that's okay. You, know, you got to, re- yeah, that's cool. You got to really be tired of what you're tired of. And then mm-hmm. the third thing that I'll say is, you know, the same, the same grace that God shows you, you got to show other people. You know, if you 
if you want to continue in being blessed, you got to bless other people. You have to circulate the blessings. And that could sound churchy, but it's life. It's That's not, right. it don't have nothing to do with the church. It has everything to do with what karma means to the average person, what reciprocity means to the average person. That's what that has to do with. Like, I don't, I'm in the space right now, the most interesting space that I've ever been in is reconnecting with all of my siblings. Like me and my siblings, I got tons of them. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever remember us ever sitting at a table for a Thanksgiving dinner together. I don't ever remember us coming together at my dad's house to open up Christmas gifts. We have been literally 15 minutes away from each other our entire lives and we're all grown. Mm -hmm. And the conversations have not been about the past, have not been about what we miss, whose fault it was. It was about showing grace and picking up from where we are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that to me, that to me is important. You know, you don't have to like talk about what happened before when you talk to your woman or your man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. show the grace and pick up from right there we already know what the past is and what that looks like i know that you cheated on me mm -hmm. but i gotta remember i forgave you i know i cheated but i have to remember you said you forgave me i'm not gonna keep trying to make you feel like i'm not cheating when i'm not cheating mm -hmm. i'm not going to keep trying to make you feel like i forgive you you know like i'm no Mm -hmm. Pick up, show your grace, pick up from right there, and let's make meaningful moments going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, like this mm -hmm. is how this is how we avoid a lot of this stuff. So like when when it comes to like listening to people talk about relationships, I really don't. You know, I I try to stay in my my headspace, practice in peace as much as possible. Um mm -hmm. I, you know, I sound like a tree hugger. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. Like, I, you know, I come home and go to work and come home. Yeah. You know, that's it. I hear you, man. But, and like you say, everybody's an influencer. And uh, I, I posted on Twitter the other day. I said, it's crazy how many people are coaches. I'm like, do you really understand the magnitude of how much of this stuff you have to live by? Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think like I can't just be out here running my mouth and people you, boy, ask my wife boy, like boy. is this dude the real deal? I'm like go ask Miss Heineman. You go ask her. You know what I'm saying? Cuz you know oh. that that's real. That's real because the funny thing was we you you and I know uh Stephanie, the life yeah. architect, oh, right? Yeah. That's Steph my home girl, girl, right? Steph that's that's like my family. So we close like that and I see the way that Stephanie's treated from the outside looking in, right? And it makes me respect a boundary when it comes to she and I in terms of our personal relationship. Like, I don't even ask Steph for advice. I know that I can, but I know that she's paid to give advice. She's paid for certain things. And, like, her impact on the advice she gave me was so impactful when she finally did like sprinkle some on me. It's been a few times. I just so happened to uh, get blessed with a, a life coach certification course. It's about 60 gigs worth of information. And the only reason I was invested in it, it wasn't to become a coach. It was to affirm what I was putting out here in terms of content. I wanted to be righteous. And I got through like the first three courses and I'm like, this shit is a lot. Like it's a lot. Like you to, to one be a person that has to steer another person in the righteous direction, but still then having to assess yourself to make sure that you also have the necessary tools to steer yourself in the right direction. Like to, to have that, on you like that every day 
You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the reason why, like, your leadership practices have to be on point because I can't imagine being in that seat constantly. Like, that's that's ongoing work for her, for God knows how long she's going to do that. So I just look at things a lot more analytical than the most. Like, I, it's certain people I refuse to dump anything on. And it would make sense to many people to say, well, your homegirl, life coach, why are you going to talk to her about your problems? Because she got 50 other motherfuckers doing that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so I got to I gotta figure out my way in certain respects to respect the people in your life. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot that goes into that. And like what you're doing, it's a lot because you got to be transparent about your marriage through your content. You know, you don't know if your wife one day gonna say, "Hey, look, you talking a little too much." <laughs> and we you had our conversations, saying? BJ. We had our yeah. conversations. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, "Am I doing too much, or do I need to scale back?" Am I, you know? And I always, and check this out, BJ. Transparent moment. My wife was telling me, and I and I took because I told her I was like, I appreciate being able to do this where you trust me. I was like, people don't understand the benefits of having integrity because I'm mm -hmm. able to have access to so many people, women, beautiful women. You know what I'm saying? But they write and, and no, no blessings. You know what I'm saying? No blessings to me. No making me think I'm better than anybody else. But to be able to have a wife that can trust you and do those things. I'm like, I don't ever want to betray that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Sure. I don't I don't for ever sure. want to like people don't value trust until it's gone. And I'm like, even even check this out real quick. I have my wife and I, we have this agreement every 90 days. Uh she she like hanging out with her girlfriends. So whenever she gets a chance to go hang out with her girlfriends, I'm like, I got the kids. It's the weekend. I'm off work. Go and do your thing. Don't worry about us. We good. In turn. She let me do my solo locations. My, I, I call them solo locations. So my solo location is coming up next weekend. And that's where basically I rent a room and I'm away from the kids, from the wife, and I just get to do me. I mean, in integrity or whatever. But yeah, just, and sure. a lot of times, all I'm doing is getting in my hotel room. I go edit a podcast episode, watch some TV. Uh, I'll probably go out somewhere, go to a restaurant, just me, just to enjoy my time. But I'm like, you only get those benefits when you are trusted. You can't talk about you having a solo location and you cheated a year ago. Yeah, for sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's I need important. to implement that. I need hey, to implement that for sure. Bro, yeah. do your solo location. And I always tell people, it's for people who can be trusted because for them to trust you, you can get that time. Now, if you're going through some things, no, you don't get no solo location because you got to build that trust. And in this season, mm. then you can. But until then, no. But people will be, I was on an interview one time and uh, <laughs> this guys was tripping on me. They was like, wait a minute, you get to do that? I'm like, dude, I've been trusted for over five years now. I don't give my wife a reason to look at me sideways. I'm saying all that to say, when you're doing this coaching thing, man, I, I don't I'm it surprised me how many of them we have considering that what it takes to do this off the mic, off the camera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's no. it's a difficult thing to even imagine, you know, when you do it off camera because everybody kind of looks at your life in such a like spotless way. Like in order for you to be a coach, you can't have no skeletons in your closet and stuff like um it's it's a terrifying place to be for me personally to know that like my life is now in the scope just by making that profession of being a coach or being an influencer like people people are actually waiting to tear you down like you wouldn't believe and you know some of these people I'm just being transparent. You know some of these people that I'm referencing in this next statement. It is so many people that I have talked to for hours and been there for them in their downtimes, their heartbreaks, and all of this different stuff. And they've used my advice to leverage their positions and turned around and called me a know-it-all. 
And it's like, that's not even my heart. I've never been that person to like, to brag or boast on none of my accomplishments or nothing. I've always been of service. I That's my heart, service. Like you, you need to know something and I feel like I know it, I'm going to share. But like, it's like people are waiting to discredit you and, you know, and wanting to like paint you in a light that's so not you or paint you in a light as if you're not prone to mistake like any other human. Come on now. You know, that, that to me is terrible. So to know that you have to like stand before God and everybody else and say, I'm a life coach. Like you got to protect yourself because people are waiting to say, well, I seen him at the bar talking to girls, you know, and like you linking up and, you know, your downtime and stuff. And it's just like, man, like y'all just got so much hate in your heart, man. You know, people, people will come for you in a New York minute. Believe me, anytime they yeah, think something is sure. sketchy. Yeah. You know, so, mm-hmm. and, and I try to just protect my marriage in that way. But um, I wanted to add, cause that's a whole topic within itself. Cause I'm just like, we have too many, <laughs> B, we got too many relationship coaches. I'm like, I don't know how you do it. Right. I, Somebody uh, slid on my DM one time and uh, she was like, what you doing? And I sent her a picture of my wife. I said, loving my wife. I sent her a picture of her. Oh, That's what I'm doing. Perfect. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I, <laughs> and, and, and real quick, while I'm on my soapbox, BJ, real quick, let me just say mm-hmm. to brothers, stop falling for the okie doke. Stop being, get, don't get your lust under control, man. You know what I'm saying? Get it under control. Now, don't get me wrong. There's beautiful women. There's fine women. I get it. We're men. We see beautiful woman. She cold. She got the small waist. I get it. She boom. I got it. I, I, I'm a, I'm a man. I get it. But stop falling for the okie doke. A lot of people don't want to see you healthy. The first thing they're going to say is, well, your husband was in my DMs. Stop giving people leverage, man. Just stop. That stuff bothers me more it's, than anything, BJ. I'm just like, stop. It's another man. It's another person that we both know <laughs> that I, I don't give a shit. It's a person that we both know that is going around telling people that I tried to holler at her, right? And I want to cut her fucking throat. I do. I really do. And the reason why, it's not because I got a malicious heart, but the only way what she could say could be true is I would have had to have been talking to her while I was with my current partner. That's the only reason why I want to kick her in the ass. It ain't even about the lie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's so, like I say, I just removed myself. Mm -hmm. Like I just removed myself because I went straight to my partner, Mm -hmm. you know, like, I ain't got, I don't want you hearing nothing about nothing. And when I told her who said it, she looked at me like, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, and that, that made me feel good because it's like, even she don't believe that. Mm. So that means she knows, she knows me well enough to know you wouldn't have, no. Yeah. Yeah. And if you really don't believe that I'm that, I, I humbly ask the girl, prove it. Mm. Like, prove it, because I'm about to, I I speak what I am. I'm not, this ain't no act, this ain't no facade or nothing. But, th- like I say, people go out their way to, like, defame you. And the reason why she think the lie is traveling, because you don't see me no more. I'm invisible to the space now. Got you. But Got you. I know, because the people you telling came back and told me. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just so much about these things going on in this space and social media. And it's, I got to cut that stuff out. Like, I, the people I follow are different. You know, um, I listen, I listen to podcasts, but not the people that you think, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. social proof, which, you know, is really like financial literacy and I love what they do. Um, I listen to the Perry's and, you know, upset the gram and, you know, like all of these people who keep you in like the realm of positivity, mm-hmm. but it's like people, people in their agendas, man, like that shit is terrible. 
Like that mm-hmm. shit is terrible that we actually live for destroying people. Like ain't no it's no safe place for a person who has vulnerability or anxiety. It's no safe place. Like cause you live in a world where everybody is training themselves to destroy people. Like you you ready to release receipts mm. on people that you said you love. And you know, like that shit crazy. Like Ain't that something? They, I got yeah. receipts, and, and that's and that's why BJ, I tra- I tell people if I slide in your inbox, it is because I'm asking you to be a guest, <laughs> mm. and I got and I got receipts. You know what I'm saying? It was I'm hard. like, I don't, <laughs> you, you, you ain't you ain't about to get me caught up in no jam. Nope, I don't. Nope, 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 nope. It so, was a uh, I had a guest when I was doing the show, because um, I have every intention on bringing some of my stuff back, but like I said, it's just not in the same format. But um, I had a conversation with a young lady because prominently the only people I could get to talk about what we talk about is always women. It's never guys stepping up to like put yourself out there or to make yourself seem as though, you know, you really for the movement of male growth and whatnot. It's really the women who are calling us out more than us stepping up. So there was this guest and um, I reached out to her. And when we finally had the conversation, got through the show and she reached back and she was like, let me find out that you trying to, you know, like find detail on me because you like me or some shit like that. And I'm like, what are you referring to? And she was like, well, uh, the stuff that you brought up in the show was like so far down my Instagram page, you went scrolling, scrolling. I said, well, one, I approached the conversation in a journalistic type of format, meaning I need to know who I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. Right. So in order for me to know what kind of question to ask you, that's the reason why I asked you, is there anything too personal to ask you when I send you the outline? It wasn't because I was checking for you. I'm trying to make sure like if I ask you a relationship question, is it going to be offensive to you and your husband that you not even posting on the gram? <laughs> like, chill out, man. I you know, know okay. because I'm I'm not going to holler at you in no DM. One, because of the, the anxiety I get with receipts. You're not going to expose me. If I talk to you, we're going to talk directly. Yep. I and that's another agree. thing with this person that's going around saying I tried to holler at you. Why am I going to try to holler at you when you live all these hours away from me and I got access 15 seconds away from me? Yeah. <laughs> like, right. this is the stuff that be bothering me about people in their stories. Like, yeah. why do that? Yeah. Why do that? Yeah. People, yeah. And like you say, we got to do better, BJ, as far. And there's a whole topic within itself. We got to do better as a culture, man, instead of trying to tear people, tear, tear people down and start building people up, man. I, because, yeah. Real quick, what is the biggest mistake you see? What is the biggest mistake you see men making relationships? The biggest mistake that I see men make in relationships is enter into relationships they're not ready to be in. Can you go a little can you give us a little <laughs> can you go a little deeper? Can you can you I, I, I like that, but I, um, I like where you're going. I think uh one of the one of the spaces that we're in a lot of times that we need to have more conversation about is um, I like you, like this is the headspace that most people are in. I like you, but I'm not a hundred percent sure for what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, that is a, it's not a gray area because it's clear. I like you, but I'm just not a hundred percent sure for what it's something about you. But like what, are the steps to figure out what that something is. Like sometimes I think we anticipate that liking somebody is enough and it's Mm. not, you know? Mm. So when she's looking at you to impress or to take charge and be a leader and actually take me somewhere and actually suggest somewhere for us to go on a date and then you just looking stupid it's like you set yourself up for that because all you went off of was I like her, but for what? Mm. 
because the for what is how you start the conversation. I really enjoy talking to you. Like, can we go somewhere so we could talk more? I want to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, or I really think you pretty. I would love to be in your presence more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to be in your company. Like, you have an approach to go with if you find out what that something is. But sometimes we just impulsive and just say, I like her. Let me just get her. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she might like you too but then when she find out you don't come with no substance now she off you you just done ruined the deal mm-hmm. so like don't get in don't get in relationships until you ready like the women that are most impressed by certain guys are the guys that completely ignore them yep why he don't never speak why he don't never you know what I'm saying and they, and, and they use that something that's the something he never speak to me that's going to be the reason she talked to you. Why you don't say good morning? Because, hey, I'm not trying to be number 79 on your jock. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that be that. Now y'all, now y'all clicking. You like, OK, cool. But, you know, you just got to let those experiences kind of teach you. Like, don't don't get too antsy and jump into something that you're not ready for, because that's where a lot of relationships go wrong is I haven't quite figured out what I want to do for a woman because how women have treated me. Mm. Some of us just know that we need them. We don't know how we can benefit from them. Man. You know, like those are, those are spaces that we don't enter into a lot or enough, you know? So that's what I would say. Like don't enter into nothing until you can fully understand what it is you commit to and you can do the job. Love it, man. Bars. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Nothing. That's it. Nothing. My my marriage influences are few and far between. Um, and I mean no disrespect to none of the people that I'm referencing, you know, because my father's been married three times I don't want anything from neither of those marriages respectfully um my mother has never been married but I want to I want to develop a sense of self from those two existences because I can easily say well my mother has always like she's very private she's not she don't date on the forefront she moved like me for real you know you don't know what's going on with her you know she might be talking to one of the guys at the church or something you ain't gonna know nothing about it until they serious you know that's kind of how she is and um my dad on the other hand like um we've had some like grown man conversations that let me know that he's entered into relationships before he knew he could like really stand up to the responsibility. And I've been able or been fortunate enough to have a village that have been so hands-on in terms of me being the savior. Like people have seen me do suck a shit and like, brand, you can't do that. I know where it comes from. They give you that respect. Like I know where it comes from, but you can't do that, you know? And that has like, allow me to make sense of those two like totally different relationship patterns. Like I don't, I don't think of marriage the way a lot of people do because of how I grew up. And a lot of the marriages that I seen growing up weren't, weren't healthy, you know, um, lopsided, um, people having kids outside the marriage and then bringing those kids outside the marriage into the house and, You know, like that type of stuff is like crazy. And, you know, and as you get older and more mature to hear the truth, by the time you hear the truth of what you've been seeing, you like, damn, do I want that? You know what I'm saying? Like, so (laughs) it's like I could I mean, we would have to talk about that another day because (laughs) that's a completely different conversation but my parents showed me nothing about marriage Mm -hmm. you know they showed me a lot but nothing in that regard 
Mm, got you. Last question. It's no trick question. Just give me what you think. Is it easier to love yourself or love somebody else? Love somebody else. And why is that? Because I was raised that way. Mm. You know, um, that's why being a leader is so hard because um, sometimes the only love I get is the love I get from me. You know, um, I've always, like, I've always been that, that kid. It's like, you know, share, you know, always. Like, it, any anybody that's in your space, make sure that you show compassion to the, the person next to you. Like, that's always been my upbringing. I got five aunts that are, like, so hands-on with me being the oldest boy. I was the first nephew. So that's, like, everybody putting their, you know, expectations and their emotions and everything into me. So it's always been that. Share, you know, hold your cousin's hand. You know, you supposed to walk on the outside, not the inside. And it didn't matter if it was your girlfriend or not. If it's a woman, period. Mm -hmm. You walk on the outside, the woman stays on the inside. And, you know, I was like two steps, two steps away from, you know, being like full-fledged sucker until a couple of guys like look man you know who actually deserves all this shit you doing you know what i'm saying like you doing a lot for a lot of people who actually deserve this like you, you doing too much you know and out of respect i know it's the people you love but do they love you that well to deserve that and then you you just kind of like funnel through it and figure yeah. it out and you know, but yeah, it's it for me definitely it's easy to love somebody else than it is to love me. But mm -hmm. um again, like I say, you know, the best love I do get in this life comes from me. Mm -hmm. You know, just assuming to do for me what's not being done. And like I I'm a hundred percent looking into the so location after this conversation. Like I'm a hundred percent and I might take it way past where you taking it. I just might drive to Georgia, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like period like you done started something because I for sure think I'm about to figure out some so locations locations yeah like, man when we get up <laughs> hey BJ I'm telling you man it's, it's, it's worth it man and like I say you you because man we deserve breaks too we deserve our own yeah, little time sure. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, look into that. I'm I'm all for brothers. Like I say, so mm -hmm. locations is for men who walk in integrity and they deserve it. So shout for out sure. to you. Sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. Brave Arts community. This has been a phenomenal episode. I think me and BJ closing on almost two hours, man. But this is what happened when we don't get to talk regularly, bro. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. I'm still here for certain people, like you, of course, like, but I, I really not on, I'm not on social media. I don't have no, you know, social media to give out none of that. Like, I'm just really trying to stay the course. I got some objectives that are like passion projects for me and I have to focus on that. So like, you know how to get in touch with me, but nobody else probably will, you know, that's just being honest, you know? Yeah. For sure, man. Well, mm. consider this an exclusive. Beep, 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 beep. This is an exclusive <laughs> BJ. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's up. I appreciate that, man. Um, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, well, give everybody your contact information, but we're not gonna do that. So Brave Arts community, <laughs> make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with somebody. Make sure if you're listening to this via podcast, leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, BJ. I wanna first of all acknowledge you for um being who you are unapologetically i appreciate that i mm. love people who can just be who they are take it or leave it i still got love for myself i appreciate that mm. uh, i appreciate I, that yeah man want to acknowledge you for walking away from the whole social media game and and stuff like that to me that just shows me that you value you and your time and you make priorities what's a priority to you screw what everybody else say right right so right. i want to acknowledge you for those things man even though i am gonna say i would love to have you back on these podcast streets because i always listen to your podcast man you have some dope shows yeah but, uh, we'll talk about that later <laughs> yeah i had a um 
the funny thing is yesterday I had a conversation. Um, one of the guys that I didn't really know reached out and he was like, man, I was looking for this episode that you did a while back. I was trying to share it. And I'm like, no, I took it off. Right. <laughs> so yeah. he like, you took the content down. And I was like, yeah. So we had this long conversation about why I did it. And the reason I did it is because I'm going to redo everything in video form. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to hold me to an old standard. So I took it off and you will slowly but surely get it all back once I figure out how to go forward in content creation. But um, I think like starting with you and maybe five other people, I'm really going to be specific to who I connect with in terms of content because I don't, you know me, I used to be the guy that would like kind of see stuff that people would say on social media and then bring them to the show to dissect what they said. Mm -hmm. But that's not the approach no more. I really want to like create standards for the spaces that we exist in. So like the questions that people are afraid to ask, I'll ask it or the the questions that I feel like should be asked versus this other thing is what I'm trying to do. But I don't want it to feel like podcast because that will confuse the intention behind what I'm doing because it's it's a lot of like trash to be honest and I know that's typical to say when you think you better than the you know the the rest like it's typical but it really is trash because you basically taking from five million other people and using their same message board as your platform like it's the same stuff we still having you know how much did you spend on a date and we still having them conversations. It's like, bro, like y'all not even going on dates to even ask this question. <laughs> like, give me a date recap first. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying like, <laughs> it's it's weird. It's really yeah. weird. So like, I really, I really do appreciate like people, you know, who do remember what I was doing because even then, I wasn't talking like everybody else, and I'm still not. You know, still not. but slowly but surely, I'll have you know something to present. But it's just. It's not where I needed to be to be a hundred percent confident, and it's not what you're used to either. So mm -hmm. it's a process, just like everything else. For sure. No, man, I appreciate you on your time. I mean, you're working six days a week. You're working fourteen something yeah. hours a day, and you took some time out, bro, to be a guest on the show. Like I say, so this is an exclusive. I'm um, gonna get this up today. So Brave Hearts community, thanks again for your time. Leave a comment below. We'd love to hear what you have to say about this episode because we have the best community out here. We got healthy folks out here trying to create change. For sure. Uh, for sure. Take care, Brave Hearts community. We will see you soon. Peace.